internet so I thought we would do a little bit of a different video today and do a DIY. Now one of my passions that you may not know about is that I'm actually very crafty and one of my favorite types of crafts to do is beading. I absolutely adore making jewelry. I was actually a jeweler's apprentice when I was very young um, because I just loved it that much. I consider taking it on as a trade. Um, so today I just do it for fun and one of the things that I've been making recently are malas. Now, malas are becoming more and more well known. I actually found out about them through taking up yoga, and my yoga instructor was talking about it, about them, so I started researching them. They're very expensive to purchase, so I thought I would share with you how to make one. So here are some that you can see. I'm wearing one right now. This one has um, Tibetan seed beads that it's made of, and then um, a lapis lazuli pendant in blue. And then this one is a jade one um, with some dark mahogany wood and some um, Tibetan beads as well, and then some green beads um, as accents. Malas aren't just beautiful jewelry, and I think they are very attractive. They have that sort of carefree vibe about them, and they're very colorful, but they also have a spiritual meaning. They're supposed to have um, 108 beads because 108 is supposed to be a very spiritual number. It's 9 times 12, which are both important numbers, and 108 is, if you add the 1 and the 8 up, then you get 9 again. And then apparently the diameter of the sun is 108 times the diameter of the earth. Apparently also the distance between the earth and the sun is 108 times the diameter of the sun. So it's a pretty special number in astrological terms as well. Like it's really fun and makes the necklaces all that much more interesting and fun and more of a talking piece as well and I've just really fallen for them so I thought I would share with you how to make them so without any further conversation let's get right into the craft project. So here is what you'll need to make your own mala. Um, you'll need some wooden beads. Now you can use the Tibetan seed rounded beads like I have for this necklace. You can use some mahogany beads. These are about six millimeters. Or you can use what we're about to use. These are white wood and these are eight millimeter round beads in just a true white color as they come. I really like to have them untreated because then they have that beautiful matte look that just makes a necklace look that much more authentic in my opinion. One. So in addition to the white wood beads, you'll need a pendant. So this is the one that I've created for this particular project. You can see that it just has a metal stem like this, and then some pewter accent beads. I don't count these in the 108 uh, mala bead total because I consider them to just be accents. Um, and then a pendant, this is a semi-precious purple stone, and then a little pewter rounded um, bead, and then another accent one. So you can see that stacks up completely. You get a pendant like this that we're going to hang from the necklace. And then in addition to that, you'll need some purple accent beads. It just really adds a beautiful element to the necklace to remember the pendant. So you'll have two on each side higher up. Here I have some faceted amethyst and some raw polished amethyst as well, as well as some more of those pewter accents. You can see they're right here. And then some smaller, darker amethyst as well. And then you have those again here. And for tools, you'll just need some cutters and some pliers. You don't really need anything more than that. You could probably even get away with scissors if you don't have any cutters. But you'll definitely need a good pair of little pliers. And then you'll need some jeweler's wire. I really recommend using this type of string because it never breaks on you. Um, so just go into the store and ask for flexible jeweler's wire. You can see it's coated metal. And I find that it gives a really good shape and weight to the necklaces. And the very last thing that you'll need, I don't know how well the camera is catching these. These are just little silver crimps. So you're going to squash these at the very end to seal the necklace. So they're extremely important that you get some good ones and have those on hand because knotting this necklace is really not going to cut so it. I got 40 inches of jeweler's wire. It's actually way too much, but I like to have extra. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tie a knot at the very end to make sure that our beads do not go everywhere. So just tie a really loose knot that you're going to end up undoing after. And then we're going to cut open 
our string of white wood. So just take off the end bead. We're not going to be using that for this project at least. So I'm just taking these off the string right now and placing them on my design board. Um, having a design board for beading is certainly not an essential, but because I do quite a lot of beading, I really like having one and it is pretty useful if you have a pet, especially a cat that enjoys playing with beads, to have something to keep them organized so that he cannot get his paws on them. Right, so I have my design board set out now, my wire is knotted as I've already showed you. We could count these together, but I will not bore you with that. There are 108 beads plus accents laid out here and so now that I have my plan set out I'm just gonna start stringing these and so you just start stringing these until you've done one half just one after the other and they don't need it need to be knotted or anything like that so this is a really simple project actually as compared to knotting a pearl necklace or something like that which I've done before so we're gonna string all of these and then the distance that I've put in between the second accent and the first accent is six beads. I think that's a really attractive amount to put, but you could definitely do four if you wanted it to be closer together, or eight if you wanted it to be a bit further up. You can see because the beads on this particular necklace are bigger, I've done four. So just try it out and see what you think is more attractive. So I've now strung up half of my necklace. You see all of the white wood beads strung up here. Then we have one accent set, and our second accent set. And now we're gonna do the pendant. I've already shown you how I put it together, but we still need to finish it off. We're just gonna do like this, bend it back with the pliers, and then loop it around. You grab the end, and then twirl it. And you don't want this loop to be too big because that will actually make the metal weaker. You want it to be fairly small, big enough just to string the jeweler's wire through and then just tuck in the end so that it's sort of concealed. And now we're just going to string that through. And our necklace is now more than halfway completed and we're just going to do the other half to match the first half and then I will come back and show you how to finish it off. So here is the beautiful mala. You can see it's all strung up now. I just absolutely love the way it looks. I'm so excited to wear it. So we're just going to finish it off quickly so it won't break on us. You can see we have lots of ends so you don't actually need the 40 inches. You could probably get away with about 35 or something like that but I don't measure it that closely. I'm just going to add one crimp to either side and then pull through the crimp on each side and string it through the opposite crimp. You can see what that is supposed to look like right here and you're just going to pull on either side like that and then you just want to pull on it so that it's tight and then you're just going to crimp them with your tweezers, with your pliers, sorry. One and two. And make sure they're really nice and flat and really hugging that wire so that it doesn't budge on you. You just want to trim as close as possible with your cutters. You can see the nice, neat little closure that that gives you, and that, to me, in my experience, is always really secure. Here is our beautiful amethyst and white wood mala. I just really actually love the way it turned out. It, it just is amazing to me and so much fun to make your own jewelry because you can never be 100% sure how it's going to turn out, but it's always very exciting, and I definitely get a sense of pride from making my own homemade jewelry. So that is it. And thank you so much for watching.